welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. Look at my tush, look at my tush, look, look, look at my tush. Ah, uh, get it away from me, get it away from me. No, behold the dark side of my moon. Oh god, no. <laughs> and also joining us today is, uh, wow, what did Silver call you again? The mascot of the show with the huge wings and stuff? Sapphire Heart Songs. Well, that's a really, really lowbrow introduction. Also, my cutie mark is telling me that I have no idea what the hell my flank means. Uh, oh my, we're talking about cutie marks a lot and posteriors and plots. <laughs> because there's a lot of staring at them in this episode. Indeed. Well, we do watch the show for the plot. Oh god, that word will never be the same. Oh, we yeah. ruined it. Indeed. <laughs> Brownies. Anyway, if you guys are wondering what we're going to do or what we're going to review, we're going to review Season 6, Episode 4, overall episode number 121, On Your Marks, written by Dave Polsky and Josh Haber. This is another CMC episode featuring, well, the CMCs. But not just the CMCs. It features the Tau. Oh, indeed. That is rare. Yes. So, let me see, the summarization for this episode. Um, at the Cutie Mark Crusaders Clubhouse, Apple Bloom calls to order their first meeting since receiving their cutie marks. Unfortunately, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo are so enamored with their cutie marks that they are unable to focus. But Apple Bloom also gets distracted by her own mark. She proposes they go out and try new things, such as square dancing and mountain climbing. We got a CMC episode where they try new things. Yay? Wow, it's like every other CMC episode. Mm-hmm. But this is different. This is different. Not to be a negative Nelly, but except I am. <laughs> but anywho, uh, first impressions, first impressions. Uh, Silver, what about you? What do you think, man? Well, one, the timing on this is sort of weird. It's like, hang on, C- Cadence just gave birth to her daughter. So it's been a couple months are we saying the Crusaders haven't done diddly squat since uh, Crusaders the Lost Mark? Then again, episodes may not be chronological. I just find it funny. But all in all, this was a fun episode. Uh, you know, we addressed the issue, hey, the Crusaders have their marks. Now what? They've lost their gimmick. But honestly, this episode highlights they never really needed that gimmick. They were a lot more fun as individuals and as a group working together. But mostly it's just a, a fun time, a little ex- exploration of the new dynamic. And even introduces a few new characters. So, enjoyable. Awesome, awesome. And Sapphire, what about you? I only like the scene where Treehugger was a nude model. That is it. Um. <laughs> okay, okay, joking aside, I... This episode was more or less of a mixed bag for me. I really didn't enjoy it. Well... I did enjoy it, yet I didn't enjoy it. It's my usual, I'm bored, why am I watching this type of feeling that I have been getting throughout certain episodes, like, uh, you know, like Gift of Mod Pie. That bored me, even though it shouldn't have. I did enjoy, like, the, um, characters trying to find their own little individual, individual, like, interests, even though they already have their marks and whatnot. Although a lot of things didn't really make sense to me, and a lot of things were kind of inconsistent. Like, Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle and Skulu, they're at the scene where they have to sing and whatnot. And then the next scene, when Apple Bloom is on a depression, she's suddenly able to sing perfectly. Like, maybe that's just the show inconsistency, I don't know, I just... I wanted to like this episode, but I didn't, okay? Okay, it's cool, it's cool. It's understandable. Okay. And as for me, hmm, I I don't know. I mean, I was not having high expectations for this episode because if you have too much of a high expectation, it might come down crashing onto you. So my expectations for this episode were kind of in the middle. Like, I'm excited for it, but I'm not too excited. So what we have here was kind of interesting because, like Silver said, their whole gimmick was to find their cutie mark. But now that they got it, what's the new thing? I've always said this before. The whole CMC stick is them trying to find their cutie mark. And I've always said that once they get their cutie mark, show's over. 
because <laughs> they got what they wanted for a long time now and they, they got it. Now show's over. There's no reason for them to have any more episodes. Wait, the show's over? Oh, well, guys, it's been an honor. It's been wonderful. But I hope you all have wonderful lives. But thank God I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. But it's not, man. You it's not. Yeah, I was going to say silver. Oh, my God. It's like we have all the other episodes. We still have to review the rest of the season. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't back out now. And also this 2017 movie. I can back out whenever I want. <laughs> I just don't want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, for me, when I mentioned that, it's kind of like a joking sense of, ha, uh, the CMC will never get their cutie mark, but I was proven wrong. So they got their cutie mark, and now, once they got it, what can they do? Because like I mentioned before, their whole gimmick is all about trying to find their cutie mark. And this episode proves to us that, hey, they're more, they have something beyond that gimmick of trying to find cutie marks. And the show tells us in creative ways of what they do here, which is help others find their QE marks. With that aside, I think we should go into full review mode, right? So, spoilers within. Indeedy. So, pause this video here if you haven't seen the episode, but I highly doubt it. It's, what, been two or three weeks since this episode came out? So, you have seen it. So, anyway, uh, let's get started. We start off with the CMCs at their clubhouse having a meeting about what to do. And like I mentioned in the summary before, the CMCs are enamored with their cutie marks. Yay, we have cutie marks now, so what do we do? Well, apparently they stare at the junk on their trunk. <laughs> Indeedy. Uh, and like I mentioned before, Apple Bloom says that why don't we try something new? Or why don't we try going solo for a bit? They don't quite do the solo just yet. Yep, true that. I think they yeah. try to do the same thing or try to do things with each other. First, they get a little cosplay on as they do mountain climbing and square dancing. So you get pretty impressive yodeling. Scootaloo's got some lungs on her. Yeah, and that <laughs> yodel, that's pretty good. That sounded like a guy. Uh, <laughs> that Scootaloo's secretly um a male and or Swiss? <laughs> I think maybe the secret Swiss. I've, I've often wondered if the Swiss conspiracy would ever be unveiled. <laughs> uh, Illuminati confirmed. Uh, but still, um, Sweetie Belle in her square dancing outfit looks cute. I like it. Cute costumes are sort of a given in this show at this point, I think. She's going to be a country star. Oh, my. Oh, That's it. Lordy, Lordy, okay. Lord. Oh, Lord. All right. Yeah, but still, uh, like you mentioned, Silver, yes, um, cute costumes are given. I, uh, the, the cutest for me was, uh, Fluttershy sneaking outfit. <laughs> what? Now we're going, we're going yeah. far back. Yeah. Far back. That was the cutest. Into, into antiquity. Indeed. I don't, I don't disagree with you, but we're kind of, that's kind of like half a season, not half a season, like three seasons ago. Get on par with the modern times, Norman, my god. Tell me an episode where something, a cute outfit came in besides this one and that one. Uh, Griffin, uh, the lost treasure of Griffinstone, those hats. Those hats. I'm trying to remember really, really hard. Mountaineer. Every episode with rarity in it. <laughs> I don't know. Been... <laughs> I don't know. I, I remember some of the rarity outfits from season four. It's like, Girl, you d you done lost your stride. Except from season four. <laughs> uh, but anywho, we continue on with the CMCs agreeing to, well, go we'll try and find their cutie marks. Yay. Wait, what? <laughs> nah, she derp. It's a, it's a bad habit she has. And well, they got their cutie marks now. <laughs> and they're showing it to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets, it starts to feel a little weird when young fillies are hiking up their skirts to show us like, okay, gir the girls, girls. You need an adult. Just for kids. But I am an adult. Okay, uh. Norman. I know that meme is meant to be creepy. <laughs> but my god, sir. Uh, I feel Napa unsafe Norman. around both of you now. <laughs> uh, Nepa's doing his job. Yay. Hey, Vegeta. Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta. Vegeta. Uh, oh, by the way. Uh, little Karibo. Uh, popped out a new video. Yay. 
Yes, indeed, yay. Okay. <laughs> besides that, <laughs> besides. Oh yeah, I was going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we're in the middle of reviewing. I know. We can't be talking about other awesome series. Yes, oh, you sure can. We can. What's the What's the whole point of reviewing that? Indeed. Uh, besides, you you should know by now we're tangential. Indeed, distractions, segues, and whatnot. I don't know what tangential mean. I'm too young and stupid. No comment. But. We move on to the CMCs looking at her the wall and trying to decide what to do and reminiscing on things that they done in the past, like trying to hang glide, fixing a table, swimming underwater in the Ponyville Lake, and other things. All I can say is Fluttershy keeps weird friends. <laughs> yes, indeed. Because the squids. Yes. But, but uh, honestly, I'm surprised the girls have never come to grips with their mortality. Hey, you know when we nearly got ourselves killed fighting that cockatrice? And when we tried to kill Bab Seed? And when we nearly died doing this? Wow, we have a, we've used up all our survival luck. Oh, those good times. Good times, I tell ya. Good times. These girls prove that natural selection is a lie. <laughs> hey, at least they're awesome. They're still alive. They're still alive, despite odds, all odds. I'm gonna yes. go get a lotto ticket. <laughs> Because if the Crusaders can survive... So can you? Probably not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the CMCs decide that, hey, I think our cutie mark is to help others with their cutie marks. So let's go find people who need help with their cutie mark. And the first person or the first pony they go to is Big Mac. Which is sort of funny. When he nearly when he nearly tramples Apple Bloom, that is the second most terrified he's ever looked. Mm. The other one was uh, the recent episode... <laughs> yes, when he actually has to talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part, though. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Making him talk is even more frightening than the thought of losing his sister. <laughs> Almost on the same it level. Is. Almost on the same level. Almost. Mm -hmm. But not quite. Yes. And, well, after not getting a positive response from Big Mac, they try some other ponies, explaining that, well... The cutie marks are... I, I forgot the line, but they try to explain what cutie marks are and don't be worried about it. And it'll come with time. And <laughs> Mrs. Kate comes in and say that they're too young for this conversation. <laughs> well, you know, the, every pony needs to have the talk at some point. You mean the birds and the bees? But I'm talking about the magic mirror from uh, G1. What, what, what you're thinking about? Oh, Okay, Magic Mirror, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I can't I remind, but even I wouldn't go that route. What are you talking? I'm actually being quite factual. G1 established baby ponies come from a Magic Mirror. No, I'm <laughs> scolding Norman, not you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. And that says a lot coming from me. <laughs> Yay. Uh... Bam, check a bow wow. You too, Birdman. Uh, such tension, much wow. But then, then they go to see a doctor, and I got no idea why, but nah, the doctor's doing his job, so his kitty mark is all in check. And also the mayor. Yes. Who, who, is she doing anything? I don't know anymore. She's signing stuff. And then, well, let's just say that they travel all over Ponyville to... Well, to try and help, but yeah, every everyone's having a good day. Everyone understands what they're cutie mark from bubblegum to mustache pony. Yeah, mustache. <laughs> yes, indeed. I must pet it. Ah, okay, I'm good. Oh, you. And then they meet up with another pony that's having an existential crisis with his cutie mark, saying that. His cutie mark is all about dumbbells, and he lifted every dumbbell in Ponyville. What should I do? Yeah, bulk biceps. Yes. I prefer Snowflake. As do I, but the show is what it is. Mm -hmm. I prefer Snowflame. <laughs> Snowflame! <laughs> uh, but, well, the CMCs get the bright idea to help uh, bulk biceps with his cutie mark problems, and invite him to the clubhouse. Ay ay ay. No, no, they can get they can get him out by having him crash through the floor, but how did they get him in is my question. Kinda. Let's just say there's a butter shortage in Ponyville now. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so they invite him to the clubhouse and they 
analyze his problems and well they got it packed they in their words they say that that was easy maybe too easy a little too too easy although i gotta say this with with both biceps uh breaking through the floor routinely i had the weirdest image of a game of (laughs) whack-a-mole Yeah, uh. I'd actually play that. Whack a snowflake. <laughs> oh, wow. You'd need a really big hammer, though. So. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. That's just mean. But it's but like, uh, it's, it's like, fun. it's like that carnival challenge of, uh, you know, uh, ring the bell with oh, the that hammer. One. Yeah, that's rigged. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's only rigged because you can't lift the hammer. Hey, <laughs> they say that lifting Mew Mew would be easy. Mew Mew? Ah, well, there's your problem. You're not pure of heart enough as Thor. <laughs> oh, because I'm dubbed. Boo. You can't lift the sword in the stone. There's a fun fact about that one. I forgot what about. But you know what? We're digressing. Let's carry on. Uh, yeah, have you met us? I know, I, I have. Di- <laughs> of course we're digressing. The tangents are much fun. but They are. <laughs> yes, indeed. But let's carry on. After waking the mole with snow flame, they decide to do a Venn diagram of what to do, when was it, and cutie marks. Saying that we have cutie mark problem, but it takes time, but something. I, I forgot the pure line. Does anybody remember? Uh... I'm not entirely sure. I have a transcript, so I can just look it up. Indeed, so do I. Basically, they say, let's just do something for funsies. And so that leads to Scootaloo nearly getting them all killed, because that's her thing. <laughs> Indeed. And, and Sweetie Belle trying to get our eardrums killed. Oh, wow. I wish we got a musician. Or does anybody know um, or seen that uh, sheet that she has? Like, god dang, that's not easy. I'm pretty sure Sweetie Belle wrote that music herself and got a little overambitious. Oh, uh, you know what? You, you know what would be a funny joke if that is real and the sheet music is actually Friday? Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's I hate working you, Norman. <laughs> for that weekend, weekend. Funny thing, I've never heard that song start to finish. Oh, uh, I have. It's not that Nobody bad. has. I have. Nobody with a brain has. Uh, y- yeah, but I haven't, so you know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you have a brain. You were smart enough not to hear it from start to finish. Oh, you're kind to say that. <laughs> but we all know the truth. Indeed. And then we see Apple Bloom's thing. Potion making. Yay! By the way, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia gallery for this. Mm-hmm. And they there's the caption for Zakura's Treehouse. I like the new digs, which immediately makes me need to go check out her old digs. Yeah, it's ch- it changed. Like... Someone pointed that out in some page. Wait, they changed? The... Yes, it changed. Let me um, let me go look at this then. Yeah, because... Yes. See, this is what this is how we're going tangential now. Ha ha. Bridal, <laughs> goss- Bridal gossip gallery. Looking back on the days of ye old racism. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, come on. I ain't saying it's wrong, but still putting it out that way. Oh, no, okay, I see thing. Zikora's hut. No. Let's see here. It's more earthy tones than uh, sort of a sickly yellow, mm-hmm. which yeah. kind of reflects yeah. how, how the Everfree Forest is mellowed out. Yep. And her tree's gotten bigger, by the way. Really, Norman? You, you don't comment on a lady's tree. I'm I mean, just, that's just a tree house. I mean, really? Oh. It's a much, much different tree. It's more inviting, more homey. Wow, it's actually trying to conjure the feeling of the Golden Oaks Library. <laughs> hmm. uh... That I can somewhat see, actually. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, they changed it around. Holy crap. Well, that's good. I don't like this. No. Okay. Uh, I, okay. Well, that's the typical fandom response whenever something changes. Well, I... Pretty much. I kind of do. And, well, she deserves it. Well, you know what she also deserves? A speaking role. <laughs> yeah. Guess, guess what she doesn't have in this episode? A speaking role? A speaking role. She's become a background pony. She always bumped, was. But, but back bumped up to title card status. <laughs> and she's actually had less to do. Oh, maybe she needs time. Give her time and she'll be good. Or give her an episode and she'll be good. 
this new dynamic has soured my mood. It seems to me I'm getting screwed. <laughs> uh. I miss the days where Sakura was actually useful oh, or something. She is. Don't know. She is. We'll just have to wait and see. But after the failed attempt at potion making by Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo, we go back to the clubhouse, going back to square one. But basically, they all decide that they want to keep doing the fun things, the things they enjoy. So basically, they decide, let's just do stuff individually. And Apple Bloom's like, no, comrades, the group dynamic, the party comes first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your, your individuality will destroy the party. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. But, yeah, it seems that way. But it seems like a good idea to try new things out. But being Apple Bloom, Apple Bloom wants to try things out with her friends. And we get uh, we get a musical solo. Yay! Ah, comrades, like all song. hail the party. It knows so much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I personally like the song, although I don't remember it. I just remember that I liked it. Yeah. How sad is that? Yeah. You you remember Tree Hugger? That's yes. Yeah. I remembered the tree hugger part. Yeah. I remember her cameo as the nude model. Um, Why do you assume she's a nude model? That's yeah. my question. Because that's how it works in the art world. But to be honest, uh, ponies don't wear co- clothes. It's a bunch of nudist colonies. <laughs> yeah. What Apple Bloom is doing in a college class is just beyond me, though. Well... Okay, uh, I need to know this. Um, can, like, little Timmy go to a community college to learn art? Like, or to, well, apply for it? Like, can little Timmy do that? Well, you could. I'm, I'm uh, at a he... university. I kind of, and I want to take a uh, visual communication, aka a fancy way, say, graphic art. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to take an art class as a requirement throughout your four years. Mm-hmm. And from what I've come to learn throughout media and through other artists is that you have to have at least one mood, nude model in your life if you're going to learn how to art. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Silver, you were trying to say? Well, I'm just, I was just going to say little, t- little Timmy would go to college course, but he fell down the well. So, you know. <laughs> Oh no! But I'm, okay, sorry. That's a reference to Lassie. I know, and I know. I know. I don't know if you know because you youngins, you don't appreciate the classics of a dumb little kid who had, <laughs> whose dog was smarter. Oh God! Now you're <laughs> now you're reminding me of Animaniacs. Oh yeah, buttons and Mindy. Yeah, <laughs> but still, if I do remember right, there's courses you can go take just. Pay them and they'll teach you. If I remember right, or if I know well, right. Te- well, technically, Tuition that's everything. in America is too high nowadays. Yeah, but still. Plus, technically, <laughs> I mean, you pay them and they'll teach you. It's supposed to be every school ever. Yeah, true that. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're really living up to that anymore. Yeah. Educational systems aside, Apple Bloom tries everything from can- kayaking. I won't say that's kayaking to river rafting to Great juice making to art, like Sapphire mentioned. She'll try everything, even though she could fail. Yeah. To baking. Oh, 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 try everything. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is, I can't do Shakira, so, you know. Yeah, it's cool. And baking. Try everything. Yeah, we got baking. And the thing is, uh, we see background ponies. And those background ponies are Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara. Who are not acting like jerks. They've made such progress. I know. This is good. We get the freakishly strong pony working with uh, Twists and Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara working with... I got no idea who's that, but they seem to be having fun. Yay! Wait, who are you talking about? Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara's new friend. Oh. Yeah, nobody knows yeah. the name of that character. I got no idea. She's new. All I know is that I feel bad. Why? For Apple Bloom, Uh, mostly. She has three spoons, and not one person tries to steal her pie. Well, maybe we need Uli the liar. (laughs) In joke. Uh, But anyway. Anyway, then she goes to a dance class with perhaps the worst dance teacher in Equestria. Yeah, but (laughs) this reminds me of someone. 
Uh, her voice. She reminds me of, I got no idea who, maybe Sapphire Heart something, <laughs> Sapphire Shores, or, I, I forgot. I was going to say, it's like, what? That, that, it, so it sounds speak- sort of Russian, but she reminds, a Russian accent reminds you of me. Nah, I'm thinking That's about nice. the other one, like, uh, no, sorry, not Sapphire Shores, um, uh, Photo Finish. Our comrades. But photo finish is more Austrian, I think, or some. It's more um German in a way. Austrian German? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, pff, the the uh, Austrian so Germans, they more, do. Uh, Hush, commie. It me more of a Russian accent. You're thinking of the girl from uh oh, what was that movie called? Dang it! It was this really awful movie where a girl keeps dreaming that she's part of these fighters. They're first they're trapped in a brothel, then they're fighting samurai, then they're on a train. Uh are you talking about Brothel? Uh, I remember Yeah. Uh, is it done by Zack Snyder? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that movie. Now Watchman Sucker Puff. Yeah. The yeah. She was the lady in charge of the uh, dance dance club slash brothel. Yeah. She spoke with a thick Ru- Russian accent. Yeah, but this is not it. Brothel? Yes! Okay. Stop highlighting it! The more you highlight it, the more weird it gets. Yeah, the only real sucker punch was the one the movie gave to the audience. Yeah. We got your money, ha ha. <laughs> Indeed. But we're not talking about that movie, we're talking about this one, On Your Marks. And the voice actress for this one is Tabitha St. Germain, if I do remember right, because she has a wide range and she can do this. And it sounds like her, I think. I hope. Is it? Well, all I know is this isn't a movie, however. I, I, I need to be clear on this because we haven't gotten to the movie yet. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, that movie, the, the 2017 movie hasn't come out yet. But we'll be reviewing that one when we when it comes out. Oh, we'll be reviewing the movie when it comes out. When it comes out. We'll be reviewing the movie when it comes out. Yeah. But anywho, um, we see that the dance instructor is, well, evaluating Apple Bloom and she says, like, sure, you can join, comrade, but you, if you... Well, we're doing, we are doing recital tonight. You have zero training and no practice with the group, but I'm going to put you in. I am smart. <laughs> yes. Da. Da. Yeah. But- but we are finally introduced to a new character in Ernest. Mm. But his name's not Ernest. <laughs> uh, his name is Tender Taps. Yes. A shy one who likes dancing. And before we hit there, Apple Bloom tries to dance with a pony. She's kind of enjoying it, but somehow in CMC manner, she gets the whole group into a cuddle puddle. That's one term for it. What would you call it? Ow. <laughs> ah, yes, that could work. It's more solo, but Tender Taps, Tender Taps inadvertently launches a new ship, which at this point I think we've gotten at least one per episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We feel shippy, oh so shippy. We feel shippy and sh- and trippy. <laughs> Yep. Chippy and trippy and yay! Yay. But anywho. I prefer me. Are you happy? Oh, that's good. Yeah! I am very! But anywho, we see that Tender Taps really likes to dance and is really good at it. And Apple Bloom being Apple Bloom says that, yeah, good luck, hope you dance, and goes back to the clubhouse where everyone is meeting up. Scootaloo is really happy with the bungee jumping class she's attending and Sweetie Belle is happy with her crochet class. Well, I don't know. It's not so much a class as rarity. I guess, well, sisterly one-on-one. But I I love that Sweetie Belle is like, it's so ugly. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I mean, she just she just loves it for what it is, and I I think that's nice. Yeah, and here's the thing. Uh, I do appreciate this. I I do really appreciate this because people need to know that failing at something while enjoying it at the same time doesn't mean you're well. Okay, you it's if you're not good at it, that means you suck, and you need practice. Well, sh- what? Wow. 
I'm just being honest. You need practice. And by, okay, by, pre- be, on, be honest and say you, you need to work on your motivational speaking there. <laughs> okay. I do. But the thing is, if you can't do it now, you need practice. And once you get it, you'll be enjoying it even more. This goes to doing almost everything, like us doing this review show. We've been doing this for a while now, and we're still not good, but we're having fun, ain't we, guys? I'm trying I'm... everything, even though I am failing. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm fantastic. I'm delightful. Yay! Yes. But after comparing stories, we go to see into the clubhouse where <laughs> Silver. You want to take over this one because I think you know the line more. No TV, no beer, make apple bloom something, something. <laughs> Go crazy? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> something, something crazy. <sighs> something, something dark side. Something, <laughs> something Skywalker. Okay, no, this is, this is apple bloom just going off the rails. Yeah. As much as I like characters having their mind broken, it really didn't feel necessary. In a way, like I can understand her like being mad or feeling, um, you know, distance towards her fellow crusaders, but really, did she need a mental breakdown as funny as it was? Because after she has her mental breakdown, she suddenly is like, oh, that's what happened. Okay, it's just a big misunderstanding. Let's go help my new friend. Yeah, but that's the thing. Um, Apple Bloom misunderstood what they were saying. Like, we should try out new things and then come back and compare stories, not break up the group. At least when uh Pinky had her misconception, she was mad. But then it took her a little bit of time to, um, you know, recover from her mentally broken damage. At least they gave us that time to... You but know. the difference between that one and this one is the ponies or her friends were kind of avoiding her and avoiding her and lying to her about stuff, and that would make anyone paranoid. This one, Apple Bloom just misunderstood. The CMCs or Skudulu and Sweetie Belle didn't say, "Let's break up the group because I'm doing I'm going solo like Justin Timberlake." Either way, it felt rushed for me. I guess that that I agree. It did felt rushed, but. That- or she didn't need the mental breakdown, is what I'm trying to the say. The mental breakdown was fun, but Rush, yes, but I see it as comedy. Like, it was funny there. Like, eh. Well, either way, it's Apple Bloom in the dark, fairies. Mm hmm. <laughs> yes. And after the realization of her derp, she realized that, hey, I found someone who has no cutie mark and needs our help. Oh no, I made a mistake. Let's go help him. Ow. And here's the thing. This is this is where I think the episode's better than uh, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. Because in Lost Mark, they they were like, "Oh, we will we'll help you." And look, we got our cutie marks with individual talents that we didn't really exhibit. You know, because the even though it's the group image, there's still the individual feather, musical note, uh, apple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got to be an apple. Hey. Now here, granted, Sweetie Belle's not singing, but she uses her crochet to make some awful costumes. And Scootaloo uses bungee jumping to actually lift the uh, stage. The stage. Yeah. So th- that's them using what they've learned to help someone. That's a lot better in my eyes than just, hey, we sang a song and everyone agreed. Well, I think there's two different situations. Like, them getting their cutie mark is discovering that, hey, we don't really need to rush in and get our cutie marks. We can just sit around and help other people with their cutie mark. Realization, get cutie marks. And this one, hey, uh, trying out new things help us gain talent. And we can help other people with our new talent. Yay, other people get new cutie marks. Yay. I'm just saying that the whole cutie mark thing has really gone down. The, the lore of it has really become muddled. That's the thing about Tender Taps. He knows what he wants to do. He knows exactly what he wants to do, and he loves it. On some level, I would think that revelation would give him the cutie mark. But then, like Trouble Shoes, he has to uh do the deed to get it, even though he knows it. And I, like, 
Well, when do these things, these things just show up whenever they bloody well feel like it? Well, I, I think it's the thing or the situation with, uh, let's go for Tender Taps. Tender Taps here, he loves dancing and he so wants to perform on stage, but his stage fright stops him from doing it. Now here, he, once he does the deed, uh, dance on stage, faces fear, and well, just do it and makes his dream come true, he realized that he enjoyed it and everyone enjoys what he did and they're happy for it. And him facing his fear and confronting his fear made him, well, realize that, hey, I love this. I want to do this more. And poop, cutie mark. That's what he, he said that before he faced his fear. I love this and I want to do it more. But I'm so scared. I just, I'm just not buying into this because that now it's saying cutie marks only appear if you appeal to the group. The, the group comrades is everything. You must, you must display your talent to be given marks by the state. <laughs> I think cutie marks or getting them, you have many ways to get a cutie mark. There's no one way to get it. They always say, oh, but it's when you learn your special talent. Oh, wait, no, it's your true self. Oh, wait, no, it's your destiny. Will you make up your minds? I do agree with that. Like, it's destiny, true self, it's deus ex machina. Actually, at this rate, I'd like to know how Silver Cole got his cutie mark. Yeah, I don't remember you saying out how you got yours. Well, let's see here. I, all I can say right now is that it involves some symbols, a uh, couple uh, gallons of goat blood, <laughs> and, and a chimichanga. Oh, does it involve a mercenary with red and black costume? Maybe. <laughs> uh, all righty then, I can see that. <laughs> it couldn't be a chimichanga, Chonga? No, well, that just that would just scare people away. <laughs> uh, but anywho, I didn't have any pickle barrels or kumquats on hand either. Oh uh, well, <laughs> but anywho, once Tender Types gets his cutie mark and the CMC's realizing what they did, we got ship. Yay! Uh, eh. you know, I, I I did a presentation at BabsCon about shipping and why the fandom finds that so fascinating. And you could point to this as why a lot of people are instantly on board with it. Because here's the funny thing, and I don't know, Sapphire, I'd appreciate your input on this, but the big studies show that male and female minds are wired differently. Male minds are have more connections from the front lobe to the back. So we're front to back. That's why uh, more often than not, guys have very task-oriented perspectives. They're good at translating thought into action very quickly and have a little more mechanical aptitude. Now, the thing about that is that with shipping, that means they see what's right in front of them and they argue canon. These two, these two are interacting more. So there's the canonical out of precedent. Now, on the flip side, women minds generally are wired more left, left hemisphere to right hemisphere greater emotional connections, greater awareness of the surroundings, uh, better multitasking. And oftentimes they say female fans are better at breaking canon, the crack ships, the gender swaps, the couples that have not interacted, but they love to sort of support. So I find this kind I of fascinating. you and Norman. What? <laughs> yeah, de- de- definitely a crack ship. Yep. <laughs> Indeed. But... I'm going to go on a tangent here and... I'm sorry, I had to. It's okay. I'm going to go on a tangent here and recommend a fanfic. Um, the fic is called The Shipper Cometh by Jay DeBrony. And, well, it correlates after the dragon episode. What was it again? The God of Fire. And it's about Apple Bloom being shipped. <laughs> With? With tender taps. Ah. That's nice. No, but it's a comedy story about how there's some official FBI guy chasing her down and saying that she's been shipped. <laughs> uh, it's a funny story. You guys should check it out on filmfiction.net. It's really fun. But w- what if I think it's a piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a matter of opinion, my friend. That's a matter of opinion. And going on to this one, after Tender Tap saying thank you to the CMCs for helping him get his cutie mark and showing his posteriors to others, 
um, the CMCs yeah. realized that, hey, we should do our own thing and learn talents so we can use it to help others. Yay. So we can, we oh can my. assist with public exposure. <laughs> uh, look how happy he is. Matush, look, Matush, look, look, look at Matush. Okay, I didn't do that as well as Silver, but I tried. I appreciate that you're trying. It takes years of practice in chimichangas. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know the pony or the dolphin cutie mark, but she's so, yay, good job. She's like, good for you. <laughs> don't make eye contact, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and Walk away. Like, Good for you, kid. Walk away. Yes. No, no, come back. Start my tush. If that episode ends, and well, what, what do we have to say? I uh, do we need to add in any more in between here? Because I, I think we've said much, and I think we should go to final thoughts. Yeah. It's a pretty straightforward episode. And well, Silver, what do you think, man? You know, one thing I didn't mention is that I like. During Apple Bloom's excursions into trying new things, we get to see the town being more than just a background or victims. <laughs> you get to see ponies just sort of living their lives and enjoying it. And there's a lot of fun to that. That's what makes Ponyville more interesting. That's what inspires so many headcanons and fanfics, just seeing these characters do things they enjoy. Not to mention art, art majors will love to see all the various artists represented. Yes. <laughs> So I'm so happy. I, it was a lot of fun uh, to witness that. It's good to see the Crusaders stepping away from the old dynamic and getting a little bit better now. Makes them more character, better characters as well. So all in all, a good time. A little slow in places is all. You're so like, okay, what what are we building towards? It wasn't until Tender Taps ran after Apple and was like, oh, okay, they're gonna help this one. Wait, no, he's a dude. Oh, the ships are born. Because we all know when a guy and a girl do anything together, they must be shipped. It's or a girl of, well, and a girl. Yes, indeed. But Or in the case of, uh, you know, the uh, planes, trains, and automobiles reference, even gay ships are not safe. <laughs> well, planes, trains, and automobiles, which, have you seen that yet? I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. All I know is that Steve Martin plays one of the main characters. But <laughs> I know that's the reference they were going for. Hey. Last I checked, you hadn't even heard of trains, planes, and automobiles. I told you I got the reference during the week when I poorly reviewed the episode. <laughs> you, were too, you were too busy going on about how all the young people don't get it, get all the good references nowadays and all that crap. Oh, all that. I just met, a, I just found out one of my friends who's also a youngin. Uh, she's never even heard of Citizen Kane. What? Really? So like, how can you not know Citizen Kane? So I'm not, I'm not giving any leeway here. You go watch Trains, Planes, and Automobiles, young lady, and you like it. <laughs> okay. Homework. Yay. I'll do that after college final. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, what about you? Well, what's your thought on this one, Seppi? Yeah, like I said before, the only thing that really stood out for me with this episode was the uh art reference with the nude college um model thing. Although I question what Apple is doing in there. She's not nude. And I, well, I didn't she is. all of the artist references, but I recognize the famous pieces. I can't name them off the top of my head, but I've seen them before. It just makes me so happy to see them. Yay. And as for me, this was a pretty nice episode. They show us what they can do um, at this point forward. And well... Like Silver said, we did get to see a whole lot of Ponyville. And it seems that, well, like Siri Bell said in episode 100, uh, maybe it's just a friendship problem and it'll be all clear up in half an hour or so. So yeah, half an hour or so. Or so. Other than that, I do like the idea of Tender Taps and Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom needs new people in her life or new ponies in her life. Having her just be relegated to two ponies is not healthy for her upbringing. She needs more friends. More friendship. Friendship again. Indeed. Da, comrade. Now, anybody want to ask me what we're going to do next week or should I just go in by myself? Com comrade Norman Sanzo, what are we doing to other people's entertainments? Yeah. 
Next week, we'll be doing My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, IDW Comic Issue 38 and 39. Don't Leave Us Behind. Written by Christina Rice and art by Agnes Garboska. Ha, 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 ha. Now, join us next week when we be doing that review. And we finally destroy Moose and Squirrel. Ha, 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 ha. You don't have the balls to destroy Moose and Squirrel. <laughs> Uh, we gotta stop this before we offend someone. <laughs> okay, if Rocky and Bullwinkle can get uh-huh. away with it, so can we. <laughs> da. But anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Silver Quill. I am Sapphire Hot Song. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week with another awesome review show. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Da, comrades. Da, Jim. <laughs> uh... Oh, wow. oh, come on. You guys know I used to speak Chinese. What the hell? Okay. <laughs>